Hey everyone, we have a 2008 BMW 335XI E90 over here and today we are going to be replacing the radiator and the upper hose, both which are busted currently. Supplementary mods would be doing the expansion tank, which you can find pretty cheap online, and the expansion tank cap, which commonly go bad as well. And uh, usually this line's okay, but uh, this fitting right here, if your upper hose isn't bad and you want to reuse it, you got to be careful with this fitting because this commonly goes bad as well and it looks like someone tried repairing this or something before us. So let's get started. This DIY should be similar for any other 335s. So if you have an I, XI, E90 or E92, this DIY should work. This is also done on an automatic transmission so it'll have a few extra steps. Manual will be the same, it'll just be a little easier because you don't have your transmission cooler on the radiator itself. Our first step is to remove our air intake ducts, which is two T20 type sockets, right here, torque sockets. You remove those two, and then you have two clips that will just pop up right over here with a little screwdriver or a clip puller. And then we take this piece off along with this piece. For these, I just take some pliers like this, grab, pull up, out like that, and then this just comes out. I just take this, grab it, this comes off, once you have all four of those fasteners removed, that slides out, put it out the way, and then this is going to come up too, and out like that. Our next step is going to be removing the radiator fan. The radiator fan, especially the first time we're doing it, and on this car it's the first time we're doing this, is not too difficult. You just got a few things you got to keep in note. First, the connector is pretty simple. It's one tab there, one tab there. You push those tabs down, have a little screwdriver to help you. That comes right off. Then you have this line running along it that's held in by one clip here, one clip here. Be gentle with that because the plastic commonly cracks on that on this. The plastic cracks, you can replace that with anything else, you know, like a 3 8 line or 5 16 brake line or something. Move that out the way. They'll move out the way once this connector is out the way. Thirdly, you have a few T25 torque sock, uh, torque screws in there. You have one over there. I believe you have one more on the bottom on that side. Uh, we'll get to that when we take off the under tray. And then the one that's really tricky is for your stock charge pipe. Now, if you have an aftermarket intercooler, you most likely won't have to worry about this. But if you have the stock charge pipe, it's held on by a little grommet on the radiator fan. You can see that right over there. So pulling up on the charge pipe to remove it and release it off the fan can be a little tricky and we will show you that once I get there. But what we're going to do right now is jack up the vehicle, obviously using the front jack point, put it on jack stands to be safe, take out the under tray and then get back to it. Got the car on jack stands, got the under tray off, which is just a bunch of eight millimeter uh, bolts holding it in place. And now we are here. On the driver's side of the vehicle, we have this transmission cooler, and we do not have to disconnect any of the hoses or nothing. We just gotta take off this T25 bolt right here. I got my left T25 screwdriver. Highly recommend, this one's a model zone, but highly recommend having a driver in a T25 form. And then that's gonna release this trans cooler from the radiator fan so we cannot pull up on there. I'm trying to see if there was another T25 underneath here. I thought it was just the one on top. Yeah, it looks like it's just the one on top. Uh, what you can also do is uh, you can release these little tabs off the intercooler. Oh no, I'm sorry, I think that happens after. I forgot exactly how that works, but uh, if it makes it easier to release these tabs and then spin them off the stock intercooler, if you had that, you can do that. If not, just leave it, it should still be able to come up. Uh, we're back on top of the car. We have a T25 right over here. I'm just going to quickly remove that. Uh, the connector. Like I said, it's easier with the screwdriver. Just like that, you squeeze both tabs. Move this out the way. This is also held in by a tab right here. So pull it off the tab. Move it out of the way. I showed you this before. I like wrapping this around the oil filter housing cap. And this fan should be 
pretty much free now. I should be able to pull up on this. Now, here, I'm gonna grab this for me. You go fast. Just kind of keep it here. I mentioned before I had that uh, last thing holding this in place, which is that uh, that right there on the charge pipe. So we're gonna lift up and push on the charge pipe. I'm gonna have my brother-in-law hold this while I do that so I can demonstrate it for you. Oh, sorry, one more thing, forgot. So I'm just so used to doing this multiple times. There's this tab right there as well, right over there. You kind of got to pull back on and it'll release forward. So I'll hold this. See it? I accidentally kind of broke it off, but uh, you just got to, it was hard just getting the angle and trying to get on the camera. I probably should just done it off camera, but yeah, essentially you just got to move that back and pull up. Now, the rear fan wants to come up. Only problem is the charge pipe is holding in place, so I'm just gonna wiggle, kind of be, uh, give it some elbow grease. So not difficult, right? It was just one T25 socket there. Uh, this little, this is what the clip I was talking about that I accidentally broke off. This grommet's on the charge pipe. <clears throat> All I was doing was pushing down the charge pipe, pulling up on this and it comes right off. This is out the way. Now we have access to the radiator itself, which is right over here. What we're gonna do now is take off the lower radiator hose uh, I drain the coolant that way. Now there is a drain, uh, drain bolt down there, but I do not want to mess with that. And I'll talk about that a little bit later because that is important because there's a difference for automatic and manual transmissions, but we'll get there. But for now, uh, before I even drain it, we got to take the intercooler off. So let's do that next. The next step is to remove the intercooler, which is held on by one connector right there. Two connector right there and a few bolts and etc on the bottom so we're gonna go underneath the car so for the intercooler we have a t25 over here t25 over there You've got a little creepy thing over here that holds this grommet in place. So you just pull back on that, rotate. Pull back on that, rotate already did this one and that kind of just comes off. Careful of debris. A clip over here. Just take a little flat head and you have to remove it all the way. You just gotta release it. As such, and then a clip over here, and do the same thing. Release that, and then just make the connections come off of it. Oh, coming out of there, this thing is a catch can. There you go. And this next step will be should be possible one person, but just because I'm recording, uh, we've got to pretty much remove this tab right here, and this little cap comes off uh, because the inner cooler sits right over there. <laughs> Here's that piece I accidentally broke off that just fell, and then same thing over here. You squeeze that back. <clears throat> Is there one on the side? Here. Uh, 
Ah, that one kind of difficult. The other side I did with just my hands, but this one I might have to put the screwdriver in between. There you go. See how I release that. This will come off. And again, the inner core just rests right there. And now, would you mind grabbing it? Yeah. Again, this is probably possible with one hand, but I mean with one person, but because I'm recording. While he's grabbing it, I'm gonna take the inner core connection all the way off. <clears throat> And then bring it down. You want to pull down on the intercooler while I force back. Be careful. I don't want it to fall on you. All right. That's connections off. And that connection's off. And look, the intercooler is off. You want to take it out? Yeah. Look at that. It's getting a little tricep shoulder workout. <laughs> Make sure you safety dropped. glasses, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Donnie. <laughs> All right. So now the intercooler is off. And we have full access to RL radiator. And that was a drain bolt I was talking about you can use. Uh, which is why you would have to take off the air cooler to get to it. Uh, so yeah, let's move on. To so drain the coolant, you have the drain bolt right there. This one is weird, all right? Uh, I don't like using it because these break commonly. Just because the way they lock in place, it's really weird. I like just going to a lower radiator hose right over here. And it's the same concept with the inner cooler. You put a little screwdriver there, pull it out, pop it off, and most of the coolant will drain out. Uh, if you have an automatic transmission, you also have two extra steps, which is these transmission cooler lines. So T25 holding that one in place. So you, either you can remove the clip and worry about the fitting later. Uh, again, same thing with the clip. Or you could just remove that T25. I think I removed the T25 before on my brother's car. Uh, never tried removing the clip really. But oh yeah, it was this side where there wasn't a clip, it's just that T25 bolt right there you have to remove. And I'm not gonna lie, this one was so annoying, it took a long time before. So we're gonna work on that. We're gonna work on draining the coolant uh, and then getting this radiator out. That's bad if you know Sadiq Hussein, right? He's like After getting those two line uh, T25s, there's two other T25s, one over there and one over there. We're also gonna remove those real fast. Just with the little extension, get it on there. That's one. I love this electric ratchet, by the way. Highly recommend the tool. You're now gonna take off the lower hose and let it drain into my drain pan. You wanna hold this right here. So it's pretty simple. Just gotta take a screwdriver, pop this clip up just like that. And then you should be able to wiggle this kind of. There it is. Oh, that was a, that was a little annoying. You're still getting the radiator out? Yep. So, got that bottom one out. Save me for the top one. Good one. Over here. We have this one that's kind of, uh, if you want to show. This one looks like it's been replaced before. Because I think this, this usually this clamp's not here, right? Or is it? No, it's, no, a, it's like uh, a... Press on fitting, yeah, but you can't really remove it. Looks like someone's been in here before, but anyways, we can take this off. So, see a lot more came out because there's pressure being held up in there. We'll get the upper radiator off, upper radiator hose off as well. We're gonna because we're replacing the upper radiator hose. The lower radiator hose, I believe, goes to the water pump slash thermostat. So we're gonna leave that one alone for now. It's because there's no problems with it. But if you want a supplementary mod, you could place that too. There you go. And then one last connection. I believe this is going to your heater core. Show the damage. Do I, rem do I remember? You got one more clip here.
There you go. And that's done. This hose got swelled up because there's an oil leak. Oh, well, actually, my stomach an oil leak here. Obviously, oil and rubber doesn't work well. Got swelled up and busted under the pressure, so we're replacing this as well. And now I believe we're ready to take the radiator off. All we gotta do is go back down there, remove those two lines I took the fittings off of, and then wiggle this radiator out. If you replace it, if you pick it, if you work on BMW, okay. Oh, your phone, your phone, your phone. Your phone. <laughs> At this point, we pretty much have everything that we needed to remove to take this radiator out. As you can see, it swings forward away from the uh, AC condenser. We still have that one line on there, but once I pull it up a little more, I'm gonna remove that line next. You saw me remove that line and a bunch of coolant fall out, so just be careful of your face, wear safety glasses. Uh, I would say there's three or four things about this job where this is why I wanted to make this video so I could show you the little tricks and the little things that you can avoid before doing this job that you might run into, all right? Uh, the first thing is the angle. So this is gonna come out and we're gonna bring it out from the top. There's a specific angle you have to use for it to come out, otherwise it's gonna hit random things and it's, feel, and it's gonna feel like it won't come out. The first time I did this job, it took me like five hours because I was by myself and. I didn't know any of this stuff, so hopefully this is gonna help you out. You wanna go ahead and hold this? Yep. So, I'm gonna grab it. Got to tilt it up. I'll bring it up as much as I can so I can get that bottom bolt. And then pretty much what you wanna do is you wanna push down on one side and kind of tilt up on the other side. You're gonna get past that frame rail right there. This is giving me problems right now. This line, so I have it up here now. I kind of grab this line and wiggle it out. It's much easier doing it up here than it is down there. There you go. Now the line's out the way. So I'm gonna get it up past this frame rail, kind of past the AC lines. So you can see, lift up, and just like that. You see how easy that was? Don't try coming straight up, and don't try this side. You want to come and bring it out out of that side. And the same concept when going back in, you want to come in like that and then kind of push it back down. You might have to wiggle around those AC lines a little bit. You can't see them, they're right over there. And you saw I just pulled that out in front of your face in what, 20 seconds? All right. Now we're going to take this over to the new radiator and I'm going to talk about a few differences and a few things you have to look out for. Oh, it's nice finally having my gloves off. Got the new radiator here. It was about 50 plus shipping from Rock Auto. First time using a Rock Auto one. I've used the eBay one before, actually two times. And they were pretty good besides the one on the one I got off eBay. We had a problem with the hose. We got the hose from Advance Auto and it wasn't fitting and I had to make a custom gasket. But nonetheless, we'll see how this Rock Auto one goes. Secondly, before you put this in your car, you have to understand how these drain bolts work all right because there's two different types now 90 percent of the radiators that you're gonna buy unless you get one off like fcp euro or something uh are gonna come with the manual one installed okay now if you see the difference between these two this is the automatic one the manual one is much thicker and shorter because what the manual one does is it stops right here and bypasses this holes right here because obviously on a manual transmission you don't have a transmission cooler so you don't want the radiator fluid coming to this hole, going into the transmission cooler. Well, because there is no transmission cooler. So manual transmission, you're good. Put this on there. If you do have an automatic transmission, we have to remove this one and then install this one. So coolant, it'll allow coolant to come through and go into your transmission cooler. All right. So that's the main difference. And you can see the OEM one looks very similar to the one that came from Rock Auto. Be, please, 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 please be careful. These things break easily. When I did my brother's car, I broke it like right away because I think I used a ratchet to take it off. And even just using a ratchet, too much force will break these little plastic tabs off. They break super easily. So you wanna grab a 19 millimeter socket uh, or a three fourths, pretty much the same thing. And you wanna pretty much use your hand. Oh, this one's bigger. This one's probably gonna be a 21. But the factory one, I know is a 19. Right, so you're gonna put it on there. 
You can see the notch, how it's on the right. All you're trying to do is slowly spin it so it becomes to the left side. Ugh, I can't do this with one hand, but you get the concept. And then you pull down, okay? It's not screwed in. It just kind of moves over and pulls out. When I broke it, I had to custom like drill it out and add a custom metal dowel. And it actually ended up being better, but you don't want to deal with all that. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I have 21 here. Is this a 21? It might be a 21. I'm just going to go ahead and get a not so deep socket and then take this plug out and show you how it gets done. I also don't feel as bad about the tab I broke earlier because nice. This new radiator has a new tab. So yeah, just break the old one off for replacing the radiator to make it easier. All right, time to put this one back in. We know it's in the right pot, spot because we got this tab right here. Upper hose, lower hose goes over there. So just like I said, we're gonna go in at that angle, swoop in. Here, I'm gonna take my flashlight, get that uh, this little lower connection in. I checked the O-ring already before I started this video. The O-ring was fine. So get that in place. Kind of gotta wiggle stuff around, move it out the way. You see, it wasn't too difficult. Make sure it's seated correctly, close to the condenser. There it is. That's in, and this is in. So I'm gonna grab this camera from here so I can show them. Do you know it's incorrectly when that hole is pretty much lined up? And so is that one to the condenser. If you see right over there, that's where the radiator has to sit in to the condenser housing. So as long as that goes in beautifully over there, our install is pretty much in. We're gonna reverse the procedures just like how we did. Like I said, get that line in. Get the T25 for that line. Use my electric ratchet to put it back in because like I said, those bowls are kind of hard to get in. Uh, we're gonna get that line in. Can you hold this flashlight? I'll probably just do this on top right here. But yeah, we'll go down there. I'll get that line on. Put the intercooler back on, the brackets on the bottom. Hook up our radiator hoses, our intercooler connections and move on. Got that one back in. Got that one back in. Got the two on top back in. Also make sure your power steering cooler is behind that tab. Mine's got snuck out, so I pushed it back in. And we are done on the bottom here. Oh, we're gonna go back on top, put the lower radiator hose back on, do all the upper radiator hose stuff, and then put the inner cooler back on. If you remember, I took off this little clip from the hose, so I'm gonna put that clip back on. Then Leave it up like that. Steep that back down. And then this little notch lines up on the radiator. Crud. There you go. That push in all the way. Once I know it's flush, I'll push that down and then I'll lock it in place. Now let's get a little tug to make sure. Yep, we're good. Solid. I'm not gonna do the upper radiator hose yet. I'm gonna put the inner cooler and everything on the bottom back up, then we'll put the upper radiator hose back on. I couldn't record this next step because we needed all our hands to do it, but there is a grommet right over there. You gotta make sure this whole radiator support goes into that grommet there. And we have that grommet right over there. You gotta make sure that it lines up. And then when you go under, you gotta put those little blocks I took off earlier back in place. Oh, what should we call it? These guys. So you got the little rubber piece in there. Make sure it lines up correctly. Have someone push up or yourself push up if you're doing it yourself. And then you just push this back until it clips in place on both sides. I'm not going to lie. It was kind of difficult. It took us about 10 minutes of moving it around. But once we got the top grommets lined up, pushed up, 
clipped those in place, everything was good. And now we can put the intercooler back on. Uh, again, I'm not gonna show that process, it's pretty straightforward. Intercooler connection goes up, then the clip goes in. Same thing on that side, and then the two screws go back on, and then the intercooler is back up. One more thing is that there is a V groove where the radiator is supposed to sit. You can see right there, radiator sitting in place. Over here, we're not in place, so we actually gotta push this radiator forward until it gets back in place. I just loosened, I just took out that screw, went back down, put the V groove in place, and then put the top screw back in, and now we are fine. You can see the gap is now even, and I'm, again, I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to make it sweet for you. It was kind of hard to line everything up, but it's all done now, and we are ready to put the intercooler back on. And get this thing going for real for real this time intercooler is back up actually usually these host connections are kind of annoying but because the radiator's fan is outside having someone come from top and pushing it in made it much easier and then obviously putting the clip back on the two screws back on and then uh, this one went in pretty easy as well so once everything got lined up correctly radiator went back easily we're pretty much done down here we're just gonna add the little grommet for the radiator and the under tray and then we're gonna come back up here and put this upper intercooler i mean <laughs> upper radiator hose back on okay so we want to have all these clips back so we'll on. put the heater core looks like it's a good fit this new hose is nice it's still pretty close to this fan i feel like the f maybe maybe motor mounts are bad maybe the f motor torqued up and hit the radiator hose who knows we'll worry about that later and then, if it happens again, put that cap back on. And then, what is it? Oh, this one right here. Tying that down with the screwdriver, and we're good. Let's put the radiator fan back in. I put this radiator fan back in. Charge pipe is in the way. There you go. Get the charge pipe in the way. There you go. You know, you just gotta keep on checking to make sure nothing's in the way. Move things out the way as you find them. Charge pipe line back up with the radiator fan. Radiator fan. Here, let me see this. Radiator fan clip back into there. Set the charge pipe line back up. Everything looks like it lined up pretty good. We're gonna put that T25 back in over there. And then uh, we're ready to fill up the coolant. Take the coolant cap off. This expansion tank is new, I can tell because the orange little lettering, I mean the orange arrow. But this cap looks like it's original. You can tell it's all kind of cracked on top. So I'm gonna have my brother-in-law get a new cap tomorrow. But I'm still gonna get this car running tonight. snug that lined up we didn't have to take this one off i was experimenting so i'll put that back on now there your fans back on yeah there you go you can see the o-ring you can see fragments down there in his expansion tank <laughs> that's the old cap and this is how the cap should look so you can see he's missing a bunch of this cap so uh he got lucky that my car is down right now so i'm letting him borrow my cap which is new and then tomorrow we're gonna bmw get a new cap for and then put the bmw cap on this car and put that cap back on my car but we're gonna take this expansion tank off right now so we can kind of flip it over and take all that crud out because we don't want to run that so that is just a funny thing i would share with you so you make sure to check your cap and make sure it's two o-rings and it's not broken like that one is all right there you go. There's one. Anything else in there? Yeah, the actual rubber o ring. This. You got it. Yay. Now we're good. <laughs> Everything is back on. Everything else is pretty self explanatory. 
Time to add the coolant. I'm gonna show you the proper way of doing that now. You're gonna take a large flathead screwdriver. Don't push down, don't put too much pressure on there. These screws are plastic, they tend to break. So he's gonna remove that. And that's, that's about it. Helpful tip, helpful car tip. Uh, it's better to use a large flathead than it is to use a smaller Phillips so you don't strip it out and cause that to break. And I have seen them break before, that's the reason I'm saying this. And now we can add our coolant. Now this is the BMW blue coolant. It's a concentrate, so you gotta do 50% that, 50% distilled water. Now because we were filling the system up with distilled water because it was leaking out, we're gonna use half of this and let that mix with the water that's already in the system and then we're gonna add the distilled water to it. If that makes sense. We're just gonna pretty much dilute the water that's in the car right now. So go ahead and add. We're gonna dilute it to make it a 50-50 mix. We're gonna keep on filling until we see the stick come up. And we'll show you the proper level that should be on the stick. The correct level, you'll see the little ball on top, ball on bottom. The correct level is when you are in between the two balls, when you're looking at it through the flat of the expansion tank, just, just like that. We're a little above and that's okay. Nothing, no damage will happen. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put the bleeder screw back on. Again, don't over torque it, you don't wanna break it. We're gonna put the cap back on, the nice one, and then I'll show you how to start the cool and bleed procedure. And make sure the car is back down, so make sure you bring the car back down for this next step. Got the system sealed up. I'm gonna go into the car, and this is how you start the cool and bleed procedure. You're gonna take your key, put the car to the on position, but don't start it. Put your heat on high, put the fan on one, then hold the gas pedal down, all right? For about, I think the correct time is 15 seconds, but I hold it down for about a minute, all right? Sorry. And what's happening during this time is the ECU or the DME is sending the command to the cooling, cooling system to start up the water pump and start the bleed procedure. And I hear the water pump on right now, so I can let go of the gas pedal now. Keep the car on. And then you gotta wait about 15 minutes. Oh. You have to shut the door. There you are. No. You're supposed to leave it open or leave it closed. It just shut off. Everything shut off. No. I'll shut back off. Watch. It's recording so you can kind of hear the noises you're supposed to hear. If you don't hear that stuff, the cool and bleed procedure probably didn't start. But it will pause like now. So don't be scared if it pauses. The procedure is done, it's been about 15 minutes. So we're gonna now check the level. Sometimes you don't have to add anything. Probably have to add some stuff right now because we're missing a lot. Yeah, just gotta add a little bit to it. That's good. I mean, we're in between the two little check marks. So we're good to go. Put the cap back on. And let's take this thing for a ride. Right, here's the first startup. Everything sounds good. Keep the heat on if you can. Make sure the heat's gonna run fine. We just went on a 20 minute ride, no leaks or nothing, so everything is good. Thank you for watching, hope these steps help. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below and I'll make sure to answer those. But yeah, that's pretty much in detail how you do a whole radiator swap with all the little things I've learned doing the other two or three I've done on these cars. Until next time, peace.